Hello everybody, I am Ardhindu De and you are watching ADC English Literature. Today we are going to read The Wild Swans at Cool by W.B. Yeats. We are going to read this particular poem and get the full analysis of the poem and try to understand its metrical devices and the different ideologies that has been portrayed in this particular poem. The poem is very important for literary student as we can read the very mind of W.B. Yeats and the poetic beauty of this particular uh, poem is also enchanting us uh, to a better understanding of the lyricism as well as its metrical beauty. We all know a little bit of W.B. Yeats and his style of writing. He is a fantastic writer of the modern period who uh, is parallel to that of T.S. Eliot and that uh, modern sort of poetry, uh, as a pound and the modern sort of poetry. The articulation, the expression, the metaphysical excellence as well as uh, the very metrical beauty, the sonorous music we can all have in his poem. But the complexity of the thought and the very Irish nature of his poem is the very interesting point uh, while reading W. Yeats poem. Particularly in this poem, we can have the theatrical attitude of the mind, uh, of the mind of a particular page in which W. V. Yeats is rejected as well as in dejected mode. Uh, his frustrated love affairs as well as his aging um, age and that that the intensity of enjoying the beauty but he's lacking the force at this present moment because of his present predicament of not having that mirth of life as uh, someone like that of swan bird is enchanted with so these feelings are being exhibited here in this poem so this is a beautiful read and we must concentrate on the text of this poem first but First, notably one point you have to understand that while reading um, W. Yeats um, poetry, you must be open of your own ideologies, own thought because multiplicated meanings and diverse complicated meanings might pop up in uh, the text and that is the very release of W. Yeats poetry. The Wild Swans at Cool is a lyrical poem by the Irish poet William Butler Yeats. Written between 1916 and early 1917, the poem was first published in the June 1917 issue of the Little Review. So at the age of 51 or 52, Yeats composed this beautiful poem. I am telling you uh, to note his age as it is relevant in understanding this particular poem. The poem The Wild Swans at Cool is consisting of five six line stanzas and those stanzas are rhyming A, B, C, B, D, D each written in a roughly iambic meter with the first and third lines in tetrameter that means it has four traced syllables the second fourth and sixth line uh, is in trimeter uh, that is it has uh, three stressed syllables and the fifth line is pentameter so that's the pattern of traced syllables in each of these tangents so the each of these stanzas goes like uh, 4, 3, 4, 3, 5, 3. Okay, the meter is iambic but loosened to accommodate the irregular cadence of speech. It's well suited to the poem's reflective tone and melancholy mood. So the whole of the poem, its metricality, its sonorous music and its very in flow of the lines is very much parallel to the thought content of the poem. 
The setting for the poem is Cool Park, as we can read in the line, is in the Republic of Ireland, the estate of the poet's friend and patron, Lady Augusta Gregory. You know this group that started Abbey Theatre? Yeats put a great deal of energy into describing the landscape because it is to supply him with the backdrop of the emotional action of the poem. So, both literally and metaphorically, the time of the year that has been told here is autumn. That's the season of decay and the time of the day is twilight, the hour of decline. So, this poem discusses the fall of light. This is paralleled in the setting uh, in autumnal light. What we see is the season of death, decay, the trees begin to lose their leaves and the coming cold mirrors the coming death. The lively swans movement that we can read in these lines stand out against the still setting of October. They represent a kind of love, permanency and serenity. This poem discusses the fall of life. This is paralleled in the settings of this particular poem that I am again and again telling you so. The autumnal life that has been described here is more or less a kind of death and decay and upcoming destruction. So the life of W. E. S. own personal as well as the external atmosphere is parallel. But only there is the difference. The swan bird and its lively spirit is the very contrast and that's the very mark of this poem. So now let's begin reading this poem and related interpretations. The trees are in their autumn beauty, the woodland pots are dry, under the October twilight, the water mirrors a steel sky, upon the brimming water, among the stones are nine and fifty swans. In the poem, the wild swans at cool, it represents a kind of somber beauty of the autumnal landscape that I have described in the segment of setting. The trees are in their autumn beauty. The woodland pots are dry. The trees are leafless and the very pots through the jungle, through the woodland are dry, dry with fallen leaves. So there are autumnal decays everywhere. So the mood of dejection and upcoming destruction is in front of the poet. Under the October twilight, the water, under the October twilight, the water mirrors a still sky. Upon the brimming water among the stones are nine and fifty swans. The cool lake is full of water and it is full to the brim. As there is no wind, its surface is so calm that the clear sky is reflected on that cool lake. So the atmosphere, the very beauty, the very description is a romantic escapist to that of domain of nature where there is placidity and calm. But upon the brimming water among the stones are nine and fifty swans. So the very last three lines, last two or three lines in uh, the first stanza, it states the real message that is in fact the whole of the poem it states 9 and 50. So 9 and 50 swans are the message that has been delivered. 
even in this drab dull situation there are lively swans they are for life they are the missing representative something metaphorically why 59 it represents something missing in its life the one is missing to be 60 it could be the love of a woman or the chance for love that has long since gone swans are elegant and graceful creatures symbol of love like hadis uh, the darkling thrush or kids or kids night angle or Sally skylar we we also expect some message through swan's presence and the message is clear the message is an intuition of love a passage a passage in route to love so here 59 swans refers to a missing number that missing number might have been might have haunted the very spirit of WBS. it might imply that one has lost a mate again this number is very close to its age that is 51 that i have referred to you he too is a, a dejected soul because he has been uh, rejected by Modegan that we all have read in his life so Modegan might be its missing number this loneliness of desertion in fact is repeated throughout this poem and the very tone has been delivered in the very first tender the missing number of the swan bird. so despite of having 59 one is missing that missing number is the very striking feature in stanza one the 19th autumn has come upon me since i first made my count i saw before i had well finished all suddenly mount and scatter wheeling in great broken rings upon their clamorous wings 19 years ago when the poet first visited this lake one day at twilight of autumn he saw the swans fly through the air in small circles lover by lover when they flew away above his head joyously the whole air was filled with the music of their wings all this made him happy and content that had been the time of robust youth romantic youth but time has gone time has gone so rapidly these 19 years has made him a single swan bird missing in their pair and no more that jail no more that love but it haunted him haunted him so passionately so deeply that he is in the mood of dejection in stanza 2 I have looked upon those brilliant creatures and now my heart is sore. All changed since I hearing at twilight the first time on this shore. The bell beat of their wings above my head trod with a lighter tread. Now this poem is about aging and is almost autobiographical. The autumn the twilight parallel in uh, that they both represent aging and getting older even they lead up uh, to death the brilliance of the swan is in contrast the brilliance of swan is still on but yet he is not enjoying them to his to his sore heart by his sore heart because so many things have impersonately corrupted his feelings modegan thrice rejected now in the abbey theater and the whole movement there is a kind of dejection too but now he has grown old in the body and soul so in the earlier days he was so robust in romantic ideologies now he feels bitter and sad at the fact that he now cannot enjoy the sight as he had done in his youth it means time keeps moving forward since his first visit to Kulpar. then the narrator 
W. Yeats here reflects on the changes in his life as a result of his growing age. But it also may be referred that the transitoriness of these feelings is all related uh, to the, to the uh, present references of his life, what is happening in front of him. So uh, despite of being beautiful uh, swan, he cannot have that mark now. The water in the lake represents truly the life. The swans can be seen as a metaphor for himself. He contrasts the swans as a species with himself as an individual. As a species, the swan will live on after he dies. Their beauty will remain. He, yet with a representative human being, by contrast, is aging and fading. So, yet as a representative of every human being, will eventually die. Yet recognizes that he is no longer young, no longer entitled to be the optimism of youth. So, he will gradually inching forward to that mood of dejection. The bell beat, the bell beat of their wings above my head, trod with a lighter tread. So, for this reason, there is an ironic contrast between the vigor of the 59 swans wheeling into the air and their energetic con condition is being contrasted with that enervated condition of the poet who is at the twilight, his middle fifties. It is like that of he is stranded on the shore listening to the vibrant bell beach of the wings of swan bird. So swan bird's clamorous wings is like that of full of life. But what it means to uh, the poet? It means a contrast, a contrast of his dejected mood. And where it still, lover by lover, they paddle in the cold. Companionable streams or climb the air. Their hearts have not grown old. Passion or conquest, wonder where they will attend upon them still. It knows that someday he will die. But the swans will live on. The thought of death establishes a kind of somber and dejected mood, a pensive tone in his words, in his utterances. The, 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 the stranger here, the fourth stranger here, uh, runs on a contrast between the change which he has uh, come over and uh, the wild spirits of the swans as well as the poet's dejected mood is in contrast here. The swan's bird has denied the effects of time. But such is not lucky the poet. The poet is dejected, devastated by the onslaught of time. Their hearts have not grown old. Passion or conquest, wonder where they will and added upon the still. So passion or conquest, in passionate indulgence or in the, in the robust optimistic pursuit of conquering something, the swans are always the champion. In one sense, the swans stand for life force. Their hearts have not grown old and they find the stream companionable despite its coldness. So they can, they can battle out the cold in the atmosphere because they are warm in heart. In, in another sense, they stand also for the union of time and the timeless. The swans remind the poet of his former freshness and his youth and make him despondent. So the very spirit, the, how the dejected the poet is in condition is reminded by the swan. So the poet is I like that of Kit's night angle when Kit says that I'm I, I like to be with you but cannot. 
that's why he take the afyam i uh, take the uh, t like to take the hemlock only to transport his own spirit into the night angle similarly like that spirit uh, w it's also wishes to be with that of swan with that of spirit but his dejected mood has denied that spirit but now they dripped on the still water mysterious beautiful among what grasses will they build by what lakes edge or pool delight man's eyes when i ever some day to find they have flown away but now they dripped on the still water mysterious beautiful so standing on the shore of the cool lake after a gap of 19 years the poet feels that unlike himself the swans have not grown old in body and soul in body and spirit so everything is changing but the beauty of the nature is here represented through swan is permanent full of youthful vigor they can enjoy paddling through the cold water and winning the hearts of the onlooker and it is also enticing and attracting their beloveds and they are mating with them how lucky they are so it's a full of beautiful and uh, how they are entitled with such spirit that's why it is mysterious and it is an emblem of beauty everlasting beauty among what races will they build by what lakes age or pool as darkness looms large over the surface of the cool lake it seems to be uh, to be a kind of uh, it seems to the poet that the swans as it belong to a different world different from the humans a world not marked by mutability death decay or destructions so it says delight men's eyes when i awoke someday to find they have flown away but this last lines in a dejected way that the beauty of the swans is permanent but do i have that spirit to watch them will i find them that they are still there but i will be unable to appreciate their beauty so what i have told that loneliness of desertion in the last line of the poem i awake someday to find they have flown away that is being repeated repeated from the first to the last this is also significant because he later refers to swans as couples in the third stanza where we find unwearied still lover by lover meaning that one swan must be alone missing a companion this might be its way of including himself and his a rejection that has been uh, stated out in the poem so i can say that here that the swan which has been a delight for everybody might be a delight forever but or it all depends upon you the onlooker so like like that of old age we can say um, i see not feel how beautiful they are will there be a position when yet will be unable to appreciate the beauty of swans so swan has gone it does not refer that swan physically has gone there might have been swan still but the poet would fail to appreciate the beauty of this one someday and that's the very uh, dejection that the very sorrowful aspects that poet tries to underline in the last stanza. the swan represent permanence or immortality their passion energy desire for success for beauty will last they as a pieces will outlast the human pieces of the poet their hearts remain young the passing of time does not cause the swans to fade 
that's the message the permanence of beauty in the natural landscape and the everlasting nature is being contrasted with that of fading nature of ours the passion of ours we the human being are being haunted by so many foul passions but the emblem of beauty is everlasting and remain alive forever and that's the very spirit that every romantic poet has haunted for here wb yeats is also haunting after the swans not only the swans the pieces but also the very spirit of swans which is everlasting forever and which can have the power to deny the onslaught of time so the passionate struggle that we find between the beauty and time from the shakespearean sonnets till to the romantic poets and here in wb yeats we can also find the same thing is repeated here where poet finds uh, the permanency of nature the permanency of the beauty in natural emblem uh, and he is haunting after that passion only to immortalize that spirit in his articulation of poetry and by that way he can have uh, his own dejected mood revitalized and that's the very root that every romantic poet has tried to escape and that escapism uh, that in root is the very spirit of reading this poem so i think you have got the meaning of this particular poem and if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask me i will try my best to give some explanation like share comment and obviously subscribe to my channel bye bye thank you